So my name is uh, Jeff Hanu. Uh, I'm with the Illini Cloud. I serve as uh, one of their operational leads and I want to welcome everybody to the call. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Well, again, thank you all for attending and, and welcome to our webinar. This is the first in a series of webinars that we hope to um, have available. Uh, this one is specifically showcasing the Easel ecosystem. As people can see on my, uh, on my shared screen, this is the Easel website that, that you can uh, go to via the, the URL referenced. Um, joining us today, we have Philip Himes, who's the CTO of Easel, as well as Jason Hoekstra, who's the principal architect of the e Easel ecosystem. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to them and uh, let them tell us a little bit about themselves as well as um, kind of take us through uh, this powerful tool called Easel. Uh, one, one point of, uh, of, of uh, reference for anyone that couldn't make this meeting, there will be another uh, replay of this meeting on the 14th at the same time. With that, over to you, Phil. All right, well, thank you so much for the introduction, uh, Judd. Uh, my name is Philip Hymas. I work uh, as the CTO for the Center of Educational Innovation in uh, New York City, uh, which is a non-for-profit organization servicing uh, regular public schools and uh, charter schools. Uh, we have a network of about 160, 180. Um, and we created Easel as an open source dashboard solution and operational data store uh, originally for our schools, uh, we got a little tired of the vendor lock-in. We got a little tired of uh, terms and services changed, uh, vendors getting bought by other vendors uh, and leaving us migrating uh, student data uh, and, and schools uh, from one data warehouse to the next. So our solution to this problem was that we ended up building our own uh, data store uh, we use uh, the EdFi Alliance technology uh, as our back end. And over the last year, we started building out the dashboard and our Flex Reporter, which is a flexible reporting uh, architecture. Uh, we got some nice attention uh, from the Dell Foundation, and uh, they're helping us to bring this to scale. Uh, they realize that there is a need in the market uh, for for an open source for a very true open source solution, and uh, we've been working with the alumni cloud. Uh, we participate uh, with them on another uh, grant. Uh, we are exploring uh, working much closer together uh, in the Midwest, and this is our first outreach to key influencers and stakeholders uh, like yourself, uh, showcasing our open source solution. Uh, getting feedback, um, seeing if, if there's a need uh, for a lightweight dashboard and a lightweight LMS, uh, and to showcase a little bit uh, what we are doing, what we are planning on doing, uh, and making uh, an introduction, basically. Excellent. Thank you for that, Phil. Uh, Jason, do you want to say a few words? And then I can sure. go ahead and my name is Jason Hoekstra, and thank you everybody for having me uh, here. Thank you, Jet. Thank you, Philip, uh, for those introductions. Uh, I am a, a technology provider to the Easel team here, uh, principal architect of the dashboard, and uh, really looking forward to showing off uh, what we've built so far. Uh, this is an open source solution. Uh, it's it's community driven. Uh, so, you know, very much open your feedback after this. Please get in contact with Jad and Philip uh, to figure out how we could work together uh, if this solution looks appealing to you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll just be ready to uh, demo here in the next few minutes. Okay, great. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing, Jason, so you can jump on the share and start sharing your screen. If Okay, just finding this now. Okay, you can you see this Yep. Very good. Okay, great. Uh, with that, yeah, as Philip and Jet said, this is an integrated dashboard. Uh, under the hood, it runs the EdFi schema. Uh, we're thankful for the open assets that they have uh, to build as a foundation uh, for this particular solution. Uh, it saved us a lot of time, money, and work in order to get this uh, stood up. Uh, and then uh, where we're going next with it, 
uh, is to really fine tune it for schools, for administrators, and for the classroom. I'll show what that looks like here in just a second. Uh, but under the hood, uh, we have some aggregation processes. We're also using an open source stack called Talent uh, to help migrate data into the EdFi uh, schema. And then uh, the dashboard here helps surface that and then customizes it uh, for various roles within a school. So here I'm at a login screen. Uh, I have the option to do uh, either a standard uh, text, uh, email and password entry. Uh, also, we have integrated with Google single sign-on. Uh, a number of the Easel classrooms, uh, the CIA classrooms, are uh, really moving forward with Google Apps for Education, as well as Chromebooks. They find that this is a convenient function for them, so that's why we support two different uh, ways of authentication for the dashboard. And as I log in, I'm going to log in as a district administrator. Uh, what we're looking at here is some demo data. So all of the school names have been scrambled here. Uh, but if I log in as a district administrator, I basically have full admin access to all of the schools. And I have a selector here to be able to choose which school I want to work with. Uh, if I, my role is an educator or a principal at a school level, it'll go just directly into that school. So I'm going to go ahead and select my first school here. And when I do, I get uh, my homepage, which is, which is a dashboard. Uh, this is customizable per school, per role. Uh, so one of those attributes of, customiz customiz of customization uh, for each school. Uh, so what we have the option to have up on top are uh, two graphs, one left, one right, uh, either a bar chart, uh, a pie chart, uh, or a stacked bar. We'll show in just a minute on how to customize that. And then down below a tabular listing. Uh, when we get to the flex report feature, as Philip alluded to, uh, this is something that really allows for fast customization uh, and innovation at, at the school level. We'll show how that comes together in just a second. Uh, but I can click through any one of these. There's searching uh, through, through my, my table. Uh, these are, of course, fake student names. So. Uh, they're all number represented, but as you see, as I type in that, it helps filter down my list down below. Uh, each one of the tables that you'll see on the Easel subsystem uh, has the ability to download via CSV. Uh, we know that these views that we come up with for the educators or principals uh, will be as closely aligned to what they're looking for as possible, but then we also know that they want to take the data into Excel, build additional value on top of it, potentially bring it into mail merges or do their, their own really refined uh, queries and graph making. Uh, but as I click through any one of these reports, it'll show me the data down below. So this is a sample assessment report uh, on one of the uh, CEI assessments on the proficiency level at one of the schools. Uh, you know, your basic uh, filtering up on the top to be able to cut the data down below. Uh, so if I want to see just male students and see how that Changes my graph, I could go ahead and change that and change my proficiency percentage a little bit there. And then I'll also filter it out just the male students down below. Uh, and then also I could use, just clicking on the chart itself, which will filter down my students below of who's proficient and not. So the graph is interactive, uh, as well as the filters up on top, as well as the table below. And again, each table has the download CSV file, if I want to bring that in and then really do some uh, some analysis with that. Uh, the way that we make these graphs and charts and tables uh, is through the feature called Flex Reports. And the idea here is we work very closely with each school, or if you have the capacity to do this in house, if you have a data analyst, somebody who's familiar with the SQL language, uh, they could certainly do this themselves. Uh, but once we work with uh, the, the stakeholders, be it uh, the teachers or uh, principals or uh, uh, different uh, administrators at a school, um, we understand what the requirements are, what they're, what they're really looking for out of that reporting. So as we aggregate the data from their student information system, from their assessment systems, we now have this in a, in a normalized, easy to use format. And then from that, we can really come up with some customized graphs uh, and, and reporting based on that. So 
we'll work with a data coordinator on our end uh, to really look through that data, to cut through it uh, with, some, with some precision to ensure that we're getting uh, close to the requirements in terms of what they're looking for uh, with, with a SQL statement. And that all relies upon the EdFi data model on the back end. Once that's done, that, that statement is pasted here in command text. Uh, and then down below that, we have some uh, options to really help customize that user display to give them the option to cut and slice that data the way that they want to. Uh, so the first option here is filters, and this is that green bar that you saw up at the top. Uh, so here we have a gender uh, filter, uh, and we have a few different ways on how we present those filters to the end users. Uh, so we have the option of a static list. So here we just put in a common list of female, male, uh, et cetera, uh, as many options as that you want to prevent, present to your end user. Uh, we could also have a free text search. So this is if you have something like uh, descriptions or titles that you want to search through, uh, free text search is a good option for that. System variable, we have a number of different system variables. Uh, so current education organization, so if you want to customize the report for a particular school, uh, we also have teachers, current school year, and current school term. Uh, and then lastly, we have a dynamic list. So this is something that uh, is responsive off of the database uh, in terms of data sets that may have already been loaded. So uh, our race list is something that's populated uh, based on the data that we have available in the database. And this is another SQL statement which will help us populate that, that dropdown. So a lot of options here to help give the user filters and dynamic ability to cut through that data uh, the way that they want to see it. Uh, down below that, we have a link section. So if we want to have, for example, a student name link off to a student profile, uh, we could go ahead and create a link there. Uh, then we have uh, display definition. So we want a pie chart, a bar chart, a, a bar chart or a table. Uh, and if it's a chart, we have the ability to define the color scheme. So if we want something that's diverging or if we want something that's uh, consistent, uh, depending on what your end users are looking for. Also, we could predefine slices if we have particular ranges, if we want to do something like that. And then lastly, uh, down below, we have the access button. Uh, this allows for granular access per role. Uh, right now we have school administrator and educator. We could fill in those roles more if we had school counselors or data coordinators, whatever we may have, uh, to really allow that, that customized ability. Once I define my report, uh, down below, we'll see how uh, the dashboard configuration comes together. So for each one of those roles, I'll have that option for a left chart and a right chart and then a bottom table. And again, those are all definable as flex reports as we work very closely with the schools, school leadership and educators. Uh, we get a good, good understanding of what exactly they're looking for out of their data. And with this interface, uh, be able to help customize that view in ways that they want to see it. And then also bring that back to their dashboard. So as I select the different charts for the various roles, we get back to my view of a flex report dashboard that looks like this. Okay, uh, just pausing very quick. I know we've got a, a, a good tight group here. So I've uh, got a little bit of time to take questions if uh, uh, we want to do so. We're also happy to answer things at the end as well. Okay. Uh, also, in Easel, we have canned views. These are standard views, listings of students. Each student, uh, again, we could search through uh, student profiles, use filters to be able to cut through those, uh, look through whatever data that we've aggregated through the student assessment system, what is their contact information, what sections are they enrolled in, what attendance that they may have on. This is a sample data set, so we may not have everything uh, here. But as the more data fills in, those sections begin to light up. Uh, also, we have canned views for sections. So this is showing student enrollment, also with their current grades. So here's the individual uh, sections. 
or period, who is the educator, of course, that name is scrambled, uh, and then who is, uh, how many students are in that particular section, and then what is the grade breakdown for that section, and then clicking through the section name, I could actually see the individual students, the student names get linked back to their profiles, the section seen above. Uh, we also have attendance data and views. Similar sort of scenario, present, excused, unexcused, can all coming from that EDFI data model, assessments and cohorts. Uh, another section that I would like to show now, uh, that's really the view of uh, the data-driven education uh, and feeding into uh, school leadership and, and teachers with, you know, things that are collected from other source systems. Um, but now I want to pivot and talk about another feature called the Learning Lab, which gets a little bit closer into the classroom. This is actually designed uh, for open education resources and helping make that discovery a lot easier. Uh, this taps into a number of different sources, uh, including the Federal Learning Registry Project, uh, as well as with the EASL team, we've helped backfill some of the sources uh, that we know are high in demand, such as Khan Academy and Smithsonian. Uh, so this starts off for your teacher, and this is really designed for the classroom and really help them out, uh, reduce down the number of Google searches in order to find material that's applicable for the classroom. So. I'm just going to go ahead and kick off a search here for an item. Let's say I'm teaching something about the moon. And as I type that in, I see that I get uh, a fully populated search here with 725 items. There's over 100,000 items all told. Uh, and down the left, uh, I'm sorry, on the right, uh, we see a preview of the items with a thumbnail image there, a little description of what that item is. Uh, I could click on the title, that would pop me off to that item so I could evaluate it, read what it's about, see if it's uh, fitting towards my lesson plans. Uh, I have the publisher name here. And then uh, also on the left, I have some attributes that help me uh, scale this down, uh, just down to particular attributes if I wanna search for those. So I have a subject facet. So if I wanna find something that has been tagged by the publisher, uh, as math or ELA, uh, also have a publisher name. So if I want things just by PBS Learning Media, I could of course drill down into that. Uh, and uh, if the publisher has given us standards according to those uh, teaching items to that digital content, uh, we also have those recorded as well. So uh, in the system, we have both next generation science standards and uh, common core standards. Uh, within the search, and those, of course, show down below. Uh, as I said, a number of CEI's classrooms are moving to the Google Apps for Education platform. Uh, so as they uh, do so, we want to support them uh, in really taking value from the content discovery and the grade book and, and a lot of what we have built into Easel. And we've done so uh, by extending it with a, with a Google Chrome extension. Uh, what we've noticed and what we've heard from the educators in the CEI network is that this is a really great LMS system, uh, very easy to use, integrated uh, very well with uh, the Chromebooks and with Google Apps for Education platform, very easy to administrate. Uh, the one issue is, uh, when I go and look at, so I'm going into Google Classroom, I'm creating an assignment. Uh, the options that they give me for creating content, the content libraries are, are, are a little bit, um, uh, a, a bit anemic, uh, and not completely aligned with, with education. So I've, I have an option here to attach something from my hard drive or from my Google, uh, uh, from my Google Drive another option from the Google Drive. I could attach a link of an item if I have one, if I browsed one you know, out elsewhere. And I also have this YouTube search. Uh, but as I search through this, you notice that this isn't totally tuned for education at this point. Um, some things apply, some things don't. Uh, so what we've done with the Easel integration was design a Chrome plugin to help extend that uh, content search that we saw in the learning lab from the Easel dashboard into Google, uh, Google Classrooms. 
So as I'm logged in here now to Google Classrooms, and I want to find educational material to sign out to my students, I click on the OWL icon. And as I see, I have my same searches back from uh, the uh, from the easel dashboard, but instead of having to leave this surface, log into another, go into the dashboard, I can now do all of my content searches right here with Google Classroom in the background. Um, same faceted search here, so I could cut down my items if I need to. I could click on preview, which would jump this out to another window. Uh, once I'm satisfied with an item, we've done a nice integration here to where all I need to do is click add to assignment and that'll automatically populate Google Classroom in the background. And now that's assigned out to my, uh, out to my students via Google Classroom. So nice integration here. We're able to leverage uh, that learning lab search uh, and bring that even closer to Google Classrooms and Google Apps for Education using a Chrome extension. Very easy for them to search on different material and then create assignments based on that. Lastly, the Chrome extension has another function. Uh, there's two different functions. I'm using the developer function, which has both roles right now. Uh, but this could also be used as an analytic tool to help bring back activity data for what's happening, especially in one-to-one -one programs as Chromebooks are being rolled out. Uh, you know, now the classroom is changing. The teacher has her eyes to many, you know, the backs of laptops, can't really see what's going on, what's being supported, which lessons are uh, more applicable or more in demand. Uh, so as we install this same Google Chrome extension, onto uh, Chromebooks, this now helps us understand what pages are being watched, uh, what videos are being viewed, and for how long. So as you'll notice, and this has, uh, this has a whitelist that has been provided to us from, um, from the schools. So, as the icon turns green, that means that the material is being monitored uh, or is being observed by the plugin. As it turns gray, that means that it's not being observed. So uh, having a little bit of issue here pulling up the Smithsonian, um, but if I pull up something that's you know not, not related to education, the icon should go gray. And this is the, the developer version, so perhaps it's not doing that. The icon should go gray saying that uh, basically you're, you're off camera. There it goes. Uh, your, 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 you know, studio mic is off. Feel free to use it at your, less, at your leisure. Uh, you've completed all of your assignments. So this particular activity is not being tracked. But if I'm on something like YouTube and it has some uh, educational value, or Google I think is one of my, also my, one of my test domains, uh, that means that uh, what's being tracked here is time on page uh, and also time on videos. Um, once that information is compiled, it goes back into the easel dashboard and goes into our last facet here in the learning lab and into our analytics section. And what this helps do is show where students are spending their time online with a whitelisted uh, with the whitelisted domain approach. So uh, if your school uses Discovery Communications and Smithsonian and Khan Academy, uh, loading those up in the ESO whitelist to say that these are approved for education, that will help that plugin know uh, when it should be uh, observing activity and when it should not. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, actually had this loaded, the, this data set on another screen. Um, so what this shows me is an overview of what the average time is spent online per school, per, uh, uh, per, per particular section. So I could take one of these sections now and I see that there's 11 minutes and 36 seconds spent average online. This is sample data, but clicking through the section, I'll drill in a level deeper. 
and now I'll actually be able to see which students, how many pages are they visiting, how many videos are they watching, what is their total time online, what is their total time online with videos, and the videos supported are uh, YouTube, Vimeo, uh, we could also investigate other custom players if you're using them. And then as I click through a student here, I can actually see what individual URLs are they, are they visiting, how much time are they spending, and what is the data and the time on that. So that sort of gives in a personalized uh, education programs, one-to-one -one programs, really gives a feedback loop back to the teacher of what uh, items are resonating most with students, uh, how long are they spending with those, and that enables conversations on, and, and also gives uh, more feedback on what particular items to use in the future. Okay, that was a quick overview of the Easel dashboard system. Uh, we covered the data analytics, we covered the uh, flex report system, so really dynamic, flexible reporting at the school uh, and classroom level. Uh, we showed the learning lab, the OER search through that, uh, over 100,000 OER items. Uh, we showed how that's extended to Google Classrooms, and then via that uh, Google Classroom plugin, how that's also used the student version to help click some analytical data to help bring back to the teacher. Uh, at this point, this uh, concludes the demo, and I'm curious if there's any questions out there if I could help clarify on anything that I've talked about. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> okay, let's open the floor for any, any questions or comments. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily be a question, just maybe just a general comment about what you've seen. What do you think about it? All comments, welcome. Let me check the chat real quick. I don't see any questions there. Um, okay, so. Certainly, uh, this, this uh, session was to be very informative. I hope people found value in what they saw here today. Um, with the few minutes that we have left, I would like to just kind of do a quick kind of roll call to, of, of who's on the call. Well, oh, we, we, do, we, <laughs> we do have some questions coming up. Ah, so. okay. Great. All right, let's start with uh, Tom Donovan. Uh, can you speak about data import? Yeah, sure thing. So there's a number, there's a number of ways to do this. Uh, we, for the CEI schools, we're now beginning to use an open source system called Talent, uh, which is uh, an ETL system that's used by many large con con uh, companies uh, in many industries. Um, we're beginning to use this to help lift our CSV files, so at some points REST data, uh, help normalize it and bring it into the easel dashboard. So right now it's very much a uh, custom process, but once we set up the custom process with this open source product, uh, it tends to work pretty well uh, after that. Um, where we're going with some of the uh, next phase work uh, with easel is actually looking for ways to build talent integration inside of the easel dashboard. So once those data integration processes are built, uh, you'll actually be able to see the status uh, inside the easel dashboard itself. And you'll be able to see which, re which records are successful, which records have failed, uh, potentially needing some intervention. Um, also built in, I didn't get into this, but I, I will, uh, you know, to the question, uh, we also have a data management function, lightweight data management capacity built into the Easel dashboard itself. Uh, so if you want, you could use this to very quickly look at the data model without having to go into the SQL database. Uh, you can see what that data structure is. Uh, you could also do a quick browse on data directly into the database to make sure that that looks right. And then lastly, we have a capacity here to do uh, upload data. So there's an option here under browse data or table information to get a, a template uh, of what that, that database table is on the back end. Once I populate that, potentially do that in Excel or, or do a flow outside of SQL, uh, I could also upload that manually here uh, into the Easel dashboard. So a couple different ways. Uh, we are also investigating, looking at how to use the Easel API 
uh, data store product that they've created to, to enable lifetime uh, application transactions. And I think that that's something that we're gonna be doing a little bit later uh, this year and next year. Uh, so those three options, one, the easel uh, upload data management is here. If you have the template, if you could populate that yourself, uh, two is to use an engine like Talent or, or another data ingestion uh, engine that's out there to help populate it directly. Uh, and then three, that API layer is something that we're also experimenting with uh, in the future to be able to help really get things like rosters and assessment scores in there on a real-time basis. Great. Thank you, Jason. <clears throat> okay. So the next question is from Aaron. Any integration with Moodle? Not yet. Um, we, we aren't integrated with Moodle, although we're really familiar with the patterns of LTI integration uh, for single sign-on. That's something that we've talked about. Uh, right now, many of the CEI classrooms are heading down the path of Google Classroom. So that's the reason why we built in that feature. That being said, it wouldn't take very much uh, to take this plugin and to make a version to augment it to also do that same sort of population for Moodle. Um, the majority of the code there that's written for Google Classrooms should be reusable to do a form population for Moodle as well. So not too much of a stretch. We just haven't gotten there yet. Uh, if you have a good case for that, we'd love to explore that. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you for that question. Uh, <clears throat> next uh, item we have is a comment. I'm liking the uh, Google, app, Google, Google Apps for Education integration, obviously. That makes sense, and thanks. All right, more questions. What else is on people's minds? Okay, well, if you, if you think of one, go ahead and type it into the chat um, with the remaining time we have. Uh, why don't we just kind of quickly go down the list of folks that uh, were able to join our our, our uh, webinar today and thank you again for that uh, and sorry Jed I just saw one more time uh, one more question yeah. from Tom if I could get to that one yeah sure go for it great um, he asked if the flex reports could be exported and shared so yes and more coming soon so each one of the flex reports just going through this quickly At the end of the flex report, there's an option here. I'm not seeing it. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Import and export. Um, so this will be, so, so this full structure of a flex report, uh, the title, the category, the command text, the filters, the links, and the display definition, all of that could be serialized uh, via JSON uh, using the export feature here. Uh, so now I have a file that contains everything that I need for that particular flex report uh, And then I could take that to another system and then import it uh, using that same file um, One of the things that's on the roadmap that we're looking to enable in the future So this is immediate. It's here today. We could use this if you had an ESL instance and you needed a number of the CEI reports um, We could send you those over as a zip file and you could import them uh, not a problem one of the things that we're looking for uh, in, in the future roadmap uh, is actually to augment this a bit more and to have a flex report registry behind the scenes. So as more easel installations come online uh, and as more data administrators design those flex reports, uh, they'll actually be able to go to a library and search through a number of pre-existing flex reports and then import those into those, uh, in, import those into the system automatically. So uh, just a little bit of like teaser on what's out there on the roadmap. Um, we do have import export available today and then in the future, uh, building towards a, a library and registry to help share that between these installations. Okay, great. Thank you, Jason, appreciate that. Um, so wanted to just go down the list real quick and just uh, have people announce themselves, their role in their organization. I'm just gonna kind of go down the list real quick. Uh, so go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, let me know who you are and what, what organization you come from. So Aaron Z. Maybe you're still on mute. If, if, uh, oh, here, no mic. It says no mic. Uh, he's got no mic. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Dave Hoffman. 
Hi, uh, Dave Holman from Champaign Schools, Unit 4, um, down in Champaign. Um, I'm the tech director, and um, we've been looking for a digital dashboard for a while. Great, fantastic. Thank you for joining. Uh, Vanna. Yep, oh, she's on mute. Hugh Wilson. I think a lot of folks may be stuck on mute here. Um, okay. Jason, we introduced, uh, Jim, we introduced uh, Maylin Lee. Hi, I'm from um, Canada. We're interested in doing a, a K-12 federation here. Um, and so I'm interested in some of the open source technology you guys have developed in the States. Okay, great. And lastly, Tom Donovan. Oh, no mic either. Oh, oh. yeah, I'm CTO. <laughs> okay, great. They're coming up in the chat, so if people can just look at the chats and find that out. But I guess with that, I'll open the floor one last time for any remaining questions or, or comments. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Philip and Jason, for this wonderful demonstration and introduction to Easel. If folks, if folks have any questions um, uh, or want to learn more about Easel, feel free to reach out uh, to myself, Jat Panu. Um, my email address is in the meeting invite. Um, I'll also type it into the chat here. Um, but feel free to reach out to myself or Philip, and uh, and we'll uh, look forward to to hearing from you. One last question: Is this being presented at IETC? Yeah. When is when is uh, when is that happening? Uh, I don't know, Jim. Do you know the oh, answer to that? Uh, November. So yes, yes, yes. It's, we'll um, we'll it's, be there. We have two. We have two major. Sorry, we have. Uh, Danny, can you mute yours? Sorry, we have two major conferences and IETCs in Springfield every year um, in November. And uh, Butch Hugh knows a lot more about that as well. Um, and then uh, the ICE conference in the spring in Illinois. So those are the big focuses. Okay. Yeah, we um, can we be will there. Be, uh, also yep. doing this in Luda in October. That's a smaller number of districts, but um, if you're a Luda district, you, um, Phil Philip will be there mm -hmm. in uh, Chicago on October 5th, 6th, and 7th. Okay, hey, great. Uh, we had another question that came in. Is installation turnkey or does it need a lot of programming? Yeah, that's a good question. So what you see here, everything is turnkey. Everything is working out of the box. Uh, the installation takes about a day or two. Uh, and we just did a, a one for Align Cloud for a demo site. Uh, so confirmed on that. Uh, the only thing that takes a bit of customization, so everything that you see in the dashboard works today, the only thing that takes a little bit of customization are the uh, flex reports themselves. But we do have, I don't know, over 30 or so reports that come out of the box already today. So it gives a good base uh, to start up with. And, you know, we're always here to help out, uh, talk through how to make those, those customized reports. Great. Thank you very much. All right. So I think that concludes our webinar for today. Uh, certainly questions and comments are not limited to that. Just reach out to myself, Jack Panu. I put my name in the... Uh, and contact information into the chat. So it's J-A-T-P-A-N-N-U at IlliniCloud.org. Um, and certainly uh, we'll get to get you the right person to answer any questions or if any, any follow-ups that you may need. If you're interested in Easel and kind of how it can be particularly used in your particular organization or district, uh, feel free to reach out to us as, as well for those types of questions and we'll be happy to show you what we can do. Great. Thank you so much, Chad. Uh, thank you for facilitating. And uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time out of your busy day uh, to take a look at Easel. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for the questions. Really good questions. Thanks, guys. All Have right. a great day. Signing off. Thank you, guys.